call the meeting to order. Jenkins? Here. Vaughn? Here. Martin? Here. McKinley? Testory? Here. to approve resolution 2015-16, 2015 MFT for maintenance of streets and highways by municipality under the Illinois Highway Code. Discussion? Uh, just today at 2 o'clock, we had our bid ready. Uh, unfortunately, there was only one bid, and that came from Ileana, but that seems the way it's been for uh, several years now. It came in at $37,945.50, and that's about thirty. About 3,500 less than what the engineer's estimate um, was. Um, <coughs> obviously, the funds are available in the MFT. This is for the summer oil and chip program and spray patch. What are we going to do? What's our, what streets are we going to do? I haven't seen the map, Willard. Um, Fred and the uh, engineer from Farnsworth go around, they measure, they, they look at the shoulders and that. So. I can't tell you what specific streets are being oiled and shit. <clears throat> and it's subject to change up until they get here. Just keep the quantities the same. But Ileana is the one person to bid, bid on that? Yes. Always or just this time? No, there's been before in past years, there's been multiple bidders. Ileana just seems to always come in with the winning bid. Thank you. You said that Fred goes around the engineer and, and looks at the streets. Uh, um, is there anything, any time we might not do this because we don't need to? Do we know? I would say that each year you need to, to do some oil and chip work um, because that's basically what the roads are made out of anyway. Well, so every year you do it, you're building a better street. You keep putting on and on, you know, we never take off. Right. And start over. Right. Which, when we did Plum Street, if I had to vote on that again, I wouldn't vote on it mm -hmm. because that looks like crap. 
was the wrong thing to do that street at the time. Right. That wasn't a one chip. It wasn't, maybe not, but it was, it was, uh, would we surface that with one? Yes. Uh, that, was, that was a pub that was put down on there. And that's because there had been so many broken water mains up and down through there, but that being that old brick street, it was in bad shape. I want to say if my streets are done, kind of I'd like to know what we're going to do and what they, what they think that they're going to do this at. So you can break this next week. Well, I can get you a copy of that. Just keep in mind, like I said, it is subject to change, though. Call it. McKinley? Yes. Desiree? Yes. Jenkins? Yes. Hahn? Yes. Harden? Yes. Motion carried. Motion to approve Ordinance 951, the Cable Franchise Agreement. Second. Any discussion? This is something, this is for their 3% uh, uh, um, franchise fees that the city should be collecting that we're not. I can't tell you what type of revenue that this will generate because we, they haven't given us a list of how many customers they have. It's only for their basic services. You can uh, look and it'll tell you that every time somebody writes a bad check, you don't get 3% of any service charges from that the boxes, all those add-ons that cable TV is well known for, you don't get 3% of that, it's just 3% of the basic services to the, any of the residences here in town. So it is something that we need to be. Um, the ICC says that we can be getting this fee and we need to be getting it. We've never done this before. No, we haven't got the 3% for several years. So this is not a renewal. Excuse me? This is not a renewal. No, this is not a renewal. And 3% is the average from if you go around to the communities that's serviced by Mediacom, 3% is what I they thought are. thought this came up before. Yeah, what, <coughs> what are we never, getting service fees from? Excuse me? Is there something else we're getting service fees from? Because didn't we, haven't we voted on something like this? Yeah, we else? never did this. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we wrote a contract, Josh sent it out, sent it to Jacksonville. From Jacksonville it went to New York, and we never got it back. They never returned it to us. I remember discussing this last year. Oh, okay. So we've been in the process of trying to collect it, but now we need to get it done. Okay. I agree. <laughs> well, I, got, I got a question. Is, 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 are our rates currently 3% lower than everybody else's? Or is this going to drive up the rates for the people in Farmer City? This will have no effect on the rates. The ICC says that every municipality can get a 3% franchise fee. So media comp knows that in every community that they serve. So, there so are, it's, it, not, it, it's already built into the bill? I would assume so, Scott. So it's not supposed to affect the rates. So I was looking at my bill, 3% of my year of the bill is a big chunk. I mean, it's, it's a dinner at least. This does, but does, you can't look, but there again, it's not on the total bill. You're looking at your total bill. Right. And this 3% that they're going to grant you is not for everything that appears on your bill. Well, is front, does Frontier service our community too? For cable? Yes. I believe so. So we're getting this from Frontier also? Because it just says Mediacom in here. No, the city in, entered into a franchise agreement with whoever the predecessor of Mediacom was when cable started. So this, this is not an exclusive years. This okay. is not an exclusive contract by any means. We don't have an exclusive contract. Others can come in, provide Cable. I'd like to see some figures from somebody else. As to what they're I think mean, or Yeah, as far as Mediacom's prices, see if we can get some other prices from somebody else. Because they, they, they raise theirs every little bit. Seems like whenever they want to. I don't I don't know if you can. I don't think, I don't think that, that, that's not bearing on because they're coming in here. They can, it, it, they're coming here to do business. And if we grant them to do business and they're here and everything, um, you know, we have the right to charge the fee and everything. I guess that's what it is. You know, you, you've got the choice. At one time, you didn't have a choice. When, the, when cable initially came to town, you never had the choice to do it. But they take, what, take what they had. Yeah, yeah, they every, every, time you charge, every time you charge a bigger company, they don't well, pass it down. Well, they're, they're not going to pay this happily and not pass it. Down. But you are, you're, I just did a quick math, it's about $7 to $15 per customer. 
per year. Right. Per year. Um, if it's something that they anticipate, they're already charging you. They're just not paying the city for it. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're not the only community. I'm sure. I'm just. <coughs> I'm wondering if, if, if we can if we can go after Frontier for the same fee, and if this is going to prevent other companies from coming in to provide services. I mean, right now they're the only. This is almost the only dog in town. But don't we get utility fees, utility off of uh, Mediacom? Or not Mediacom, but uh, Frontier? No. Verizon? Say. Well, Frontier, Verizon, uh, we Dish, help. We Dish help. Direct. <clears throat> we don't get front, we don't get utility. No. Okay. No. Not on satellite providers. Online providers we do. Right. I mean, they're sharing our utilities, you know, they're, they're on our poles. So, so we should go after Frontier for the three percent also. I don't know that you can. I can check into it. I don't believe you can. Yeah, they're they're a line provider, right? <clears throat> they're a telephone provider. Yeah, they provide the, they provide cable services. Right. I don't know if they're providing cable services in Farm City. I'm just trying to keep this. I'm trying to keep this keep this across the board. If the media company won't pay it, wouldn't that would they want the other competitors to pay also? I would say if you had, if Comcast was in town, then Comcast would be paying it as well. Okay. So. I mean, any other discussion? Call it. That's Lauren. Right. Yes. Dickens. Yes. Lauren. Yes. Lauren. Yes. McKinley. Yes. What you get? I make a motion to approve ordinance 952, uh, amend liquor license ordinance, adding class H catering. I'm sorry. Discussion? Well, at the last meeting, I advised you that we had a request. I don't know if the uh, person uh, requesting the, the uh, license change is in here. Um, there is a business in town that does catering, it's a unique business. Um, the uh, property owner, the business owner has stated that um, with some of the catering business that she has, that obviously um, those people would like to be served with an alcohol beverage at the time. If she's granted a uh, local license and she gets her state license, then that will help her business here. She gets her state license and she goes into other communities, she can get a temporary permit for there. Um, <coughs> The uh, ordinance that it is in front of you, the verbatim from state statute. So, Ginger, why do you want to do this? Why? You, you want to explain it to me because I'm, I'm not quite sure if I really like the idea. Uh, well, it's right in my pocket. Um, is really what it comes down to. I lost about uh, $36,000 um, by turning, turning down offers because I don't do alcohol sales for private events. It's not going to be prepackaged liquor. It's to pop a cork because I can't even do that. Like we can't pour alcohol at an event for a wedding. Um, we can't, you know, do serve wine, put wine on the table. That would have to be a different event. That would be money in my pocket, which is also sales, which would benefit the city of Columbia as well. So a wedding that you have done, let's say, have you done a wedding here in town where you had? You have. But where where they had some place other than the country club where they were oh, yeah. We do private like private parties all the time. Um, where we cater inside people's backyards, which is becoming a huge trend in the catering world where people like to keep it pretty rustic. That was what I was wanting an example. Yeah. Okay. We do um, gosh, I've done a graduation, like a college graduation where they wanted to do a family meal before it happened and they wanted us to do like the toast and pour the toast for them and I couldn't. And in turn, I lost out on several hundred dollars because of that. If, if you cater somebody's backyard, are you carrying a thing called dram shop liability? Yeah, I do have dram shop insurance. And so the alcohol doesn't leave the premises? Correct. How do you I need to control that. How do you make sure you got somebody to gate or something? Yeah, well, usually we do. I usually ha I have a um, tenured bartender who I would employ who has all the certifications, he's gone through taps, he's gone through. Um, everything that he needs to. He's been bartending for over 20 years. Um, and so you can, you know the telltale signs when someone's been over served or not to serve. And typically at functions, um, most people, most, 
aren't there to get intoxicated. Most just want to enjoy like a beer or a wine with their dinner or have a champagne toast. That's my other question. What happens to the leftover alcohol or the that comes bottles? With me. Nope, that comes with me and then we go destroy it. You destroy it? Mm -hmm. I'm not, I'm not interested in doing like where people could come in and buy alcohol, you know, yeah. and serve lunches or whatever. That's not, that's not my thing. We have several other establishments in town that people can do that with. Um, my goal is just to be able to enhance the party goers and to be able to provide a service that would complete and round out our catering business. I'm trying to imagine where you might have a conflict with the bars or the clubs. There isn't any. Randy's okay. the one. Do you see one? Do I see a conflict? Yes. No, I just, uh, the only thing I can say is if you get a state license, that's not like a driver's license where you can take that license and go on the road with it. Actually, um, yeah, I talked I talk to the Commissioner and they said she had a local and a state that she could serve in any city with just a uh, permit. If they provide one. If they give her the permit, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, if they provide one. Right now, if you went out in the county, there is no permit. And does the county issue that permit, or does the state? Does the state they permit? would have to. They would have to go to the county and, and see if they can create something. Mm -hmm. the, the county has their own liquor ordinances, so they, they would have to. Not only this county, I suspect about every county. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't the permit come from the city that she's serving in, mm -hmm. not the county? It de depends. If, it depends. If, if the city, if she wanted to go to Leroy and have something over there, they would issue a, her permit if right. they had that on their books to do that. If they don't, and she wants to go to the county, go to the country house, there's somebody out there, then they, they, she'd have to go to the county and ask for that, if the county has that, or they'd have to create it if they don't. Um, I, I, guess, I guess I'm asking. When somebody had, has you come in and cater and they want you to pour the toast, I'm a little bit, you know, why wouldn't they pour the toast? Why wouldn't they buy they don't, the They don't want to be bothered with having to serve multiple guests and go through and pour at each table. Well, if you're doing, if you're doing a backyard event, though, what, can't, can't people buy their own alcohol, bring it in and pour it themselves? They can, but Or they're accounting on your gram shop insurance to cover them? Probably a little bit of both, but they can pour it themselves if it's in a privately held establishment. However, a lot of times they don't want to have to deal with service themselves. They don't want to have to go ahead and hire. And if they hired me as a caterer, that would be a complete package. And so they wouldn't have to worry about trying to find somebody to be responsible for themselves because that would fall under my jurisdiction. But we could go back to the underage drinking into this thing too. You said you got a bartender. Well, the bartenders, they're fixed. It's their chips. You, 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 you get a list of the people and there's chips that you give them or you give them tickets or there's, I mean, you're not going to be able to negate that 100% because you know kids and they'll find a way if they want to. Um, but what it comes down to is that the majority will be responsible. You know, and if, it, if I'm the one who pours, if I'm the one who goes through and fills the cups for at a wedding and fills the cups for the alcohol, I can guarantee it's going to be a five ounce pour instead of an over pour, which they might do on their own. Any other discussion? Or and you would be responsible for all the proper permits? Correct. That would be on me to go get and file for. Does any problems come back on the pharmacy license portion of this? It should not, because I would only, the pharmacy portion of this would only be for what I would serve in new private parties if we're not at like the VFW or the Blue Legion or at the um, country club where they would pour themselves. Do we have a liquor commissioner that keeps track of this stuff? Yes, yes. Mayor. right there. Uh, how often do we keep track of this? Well, I mean, it reports, um, it's got a report in the other day of violations and what have you. Yeah. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Paul. Oh. Junior? <coughs> 
Jenkins? Yes. Har Hahn? Yes. Harden? Yes. McKinley? No. Just Lori? Yes. Motion carried. <coughs> Moves us to section four other items. City manager's report. <coughs> Um, it was anticipated that today that the work would start up on North Plum Street. I know I reported this to you several times. Some of the construction company, some of the construction equipment has showed up. Uh, unfortunately, with the rain and all the water standing up there, they didn't start today. City guys have got their materials in. They're going to put catch basins on the north side. If you go up there and look, the north side of the railroad tracks looks like a lake. Uh, so it's anticipated to get that water up to 150 make it go away, and then we'll have a new road surface. Uh, if you've been out around Casey's, you see how fast that building's going. Uh, just today that they had called with uh, requesting a, a new liquor license change at the city clerk, and also the electric guys have been out there working on the primary feeder line going out there. Uh, Casey's is putting in a lot of that underground. You see that there's a new pole out in front of Wingers. That's the demarcation line. Um, Water Department has reported that that emergency generator that we've discussed before, I think we discussed that in several meetings, including the budget meeting, that thing has been fixed. Calvin said that it will now start up on its own and they can shut her down. That's the one at the water plant, so if we have a power outage, where the lines are down or whatever, we will be able to pump water. Um, at the last meeting, there was a question raised uh, about the city employees taking an hour of lunch. Um, in your packets, you did see the policy that took effect starting today about the city employees taking a half hour lunch. So their hours have been set from 7 to 12. Uh, from 12 to 12.30, they'll take a half hour non-paid lunch and work from 12.30 to 3.30. In doing so, I called around and the city clerk assisted. We called around to several communities. Um, five to seven communities were called. They all take a half hour non-paid lunch. So, um, just to let you know. Any questions to the city manager's report? <clears throat> non agenda items and other business? I've got, I've got one for the On uh, Richardson Street, what's uh, the plan for putting that back the way it should be? Um, the plan is it needs to quit raining so he can get in there and get the, the terraces graded down. Then hot asphalt will go across any place where he crossed the street so the street repairs will be made. Um, weather's been biting. Mac Calvin's been out there with him. They've got the residential lines hooked up. That's all good to go. It's just a matter of uh, now we're down to the, the dress work. So. And there's been a couple of residents up and down through there that's called, and I can explain that to them. So, and I just want you know, then we'll see a little progress. <clears throat> yeah. Other agenda, non agenda items? Yeah. I'm, sure. um, I'm kind of back on the liquor license issue. I, I was looking at this, we got these liquor licenses that aren't issued that are on the books but not issued. I know we got one more coming up that I think we want, we're going to talk about eventually. I kind of like to see these. Uh, other liquor licenses go away. And it's, it's obvious we're, we're, we're making the license as we need them to suit the person they're for. So I don't see a reason to have brass rings hanging around for people to grab. You see what I'm saying? Well, you're limited to, well, I think there's only two that's out there, well, besides a restaurant, then you have two others that are available. Correct. Um, are you saying you want them to go away now? Well, um, I don't know. What two do you say are available? What two are available? The uh, the A1, according to the book. I, I don't see that, Larry. I don't see if you have that. That's available. That's, that's those those licenses are gone in that ACE classification. Whether it's an A or an A1, there's two of them out and there's two of them gone. And I don't look at that as being. I, I don't look at the A1 as being a license that's available. I don't know that the person that's requesting that's going to be able to get it. I can get a legal opinion to see because of the wording of that ordinance, if that you get the legal opinion, I want to find out. That does not mean I'm doing that. Originally when this was done, when I was the mayor, we got rid of a lot of licenses because there's rusties out here. Mm -hmm. They were hanging out there and every time somebody dropped one, boom, the next week it got, it got dissolved because you don't need to have, have all the liquor stores in town we had at one time. It just 
Nobody's going to make any money to keep doing that. Well, that, so that, that's, 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 that's what I've, I've, I've been looking at this at the, the census uh, pages for Farmer City and the Illinois Illinois Liquor Commission license. We've got eight active licenses, and if you look at people that are over 18 in our town, there's 193 people per bar provided everybody drinks, and we're at the top of the uh, of the saturation list. And if you go, if you look at all the towns around Farmer City, there's a lot of them that have 300, 400, uh, up to 580 people per bar. So I can see where they can support maybe another liquor license, but. Places like DeWitt, they got 150 people for one bar, and, and I think they might even have two bars. I'm not sure on that. But I'm just saying our, our market's saturated is what I'm getting at. And in order to avoid any, any more com conflict, I don't think we should have the brass rings hanging around for people to grab. Since we can make them anyhow, and if somebody comes in and wants to look for lessons, don't we just write the license? Don't we make it up? You uh, can. Not facetiously make it up. I mean, we make the license as it's needed. For their situation, you can. Yeah. Because what's out there, and they come and apply for it, you got to give it to them. Yeah, I mean, if, it, if, it, if it's there, you've got to come up with a reason <coughs> to give it to them. Yeah. If it's not there, then we've got to come up with a reason to give it to them, which is, puts it in a different light. So, <clears throat> if the A1 is not available, which we don't know for sure, the only thing that's left is the one license available for a restaurant. A restaurant showed an interest in that. So are we going to do away with that or are we going to are we going to look at show the interest in it? Yes. <coughs> I'm personally not in favor of removing the restaurant license at this time. At this time, I don't think so either. I'll find out about I'll find out about that wording. But I don't know that that person will meet the requirements anyway. So, but I'll find out. Other non agenda items? Sorry. No, it's in the neck. It's in. Sorry? No. Entertain no, we have a, uh, two public comments this evening. The first one to return the paper in was Jill. Do you have the floor yet? Okay, thank you. I wanted to recap the Heritage Days uh, that we had last weekend. I just wanted to thank you all for appropriating the funding for the Heritage Days of 15. We are very appreciative. We look for outside sources, uh, you know, different businesses throughout the county and, and uh, the area. And we always try to be as frugal as we can. With everything costing way much, a lot more than every year, it seems like. Um, we try to do it as cheaply as possible. Our 2015 estimated attendance was at least 3,000 for the three days. The carnival we brought in was CDAC out of Peoria. We had $1,950 in advance sale tickets, which they were discounted. And then there was thir 13 concessions, uh, three food trailers, and the rest were gaming. Um, this is the first time in three years that we've had the carnival downtown that we actually got an accounting of what the actual gross revenues were. So we were really encouraged with that. Um, in this fair, quote unquote, industry, you just have to trust them. It's cash only business. What they tell you is, is what they say. So I think Lance, you can. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. In my opinion, we've got the we've had the best carnival ever. Uh, they were clean. They were very respectful to the town. Um, this is the furthest south that they traveled. The weekend before, they were in Bloomington at Eastland Mall, so they were a little on edge also because they really didn't know, other than a couple trips here, looking at the town and the fairgrounds where they were housed and and all that, what they would come up against. And, um, but they were very appreciative of the hospitality that we showed them as well. And for that, I'd like to thank the citizens of Farmer City for that. Some of the numbers were, uh, the 5K numbers were up, Josh said. Uh, 82 runners, the Kids Fun Run, we had 75 that participated. In 2014, we had 35 car show entries. This year, we were up to 63. <clears throat> we had approximately 
uh, kids tractor pull participants and kids crafts, about 70 kids. The bands were all attended three nights, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and they were very well received. The Strongman Show had about 75 people watching. The Whip Guy was a new show. Um, he had about 150 people for the two shows on Saturday. The Clown and More, she did 245 kids that either got their face painted or had balloons, uh, shapes made for them. We brought in the Kids Science Center and the Fossils Rock. Uh, they were also a very popular, excuse me, attraction. And the firemen had a free biscuits and gravy, and they were sold out. They had some gravy left, but all the biscuits were sold out. So that's good. Um, there are several local groups that were involved with the operation of the activities during that event. Uh, the Kiwanis, the Gibson Area Hospital, Historical and Genealogical Society. The Boy Scouts picked up all our trash. Uh, uh, Farmer City Chamber of Commerce, Firemen's Club, Central Illinois Ag, Farmer City Gar Garden Club, and we can't forget the city crews and the police also assisted in the preliminary setup before and after of taking everything down, um, especially the barricades in the middle of the night after the bars closed. And also uh, we had DJ Lance Speaker that helped us rock out at the car show and that was very well attended also. So lots of or local organizations also provided food. We were limited with the amount of food trailers that we've had this year. Whatever the food trailers sold, we could not let our nonprofits sell. But uh, everybody was really good about it. Uh, JFL, or I'm sorry, yeah, JFL cheerleaders, uh, VFW, Sacred Heart Church, and then there were some merchandise vendors also with some arts and crafts. And um, like I said, Everybody just worked so well together, and it, it just seemed to go just like clockwork this year, which is very nice. Um, Heritage Days Committee will be taking a couple months off. We have our recap meeting Wednesday night, and um, then they're going to gear up for the six, 2016 event. The committee is very small, but they have the willingness to get things done, and they represent the city to its fullest, in my opinion. I feel that this event will just keep growing bigger and bigger every year once the word gets out. As the committee chairman, this is notification that I am stepping down as chairman of the event. I have no doubts the committee can do uh, great things. They have my name, they have my phone number. I will be more than happy to help. I'm just going to not be the chairman any longer. Um, thank you for your trust with the committee, with the, the money that you guys appropriate to us. And um, it's time for me to step back to my real fair roots. So, thank you. Thank you. I will say it was. I think it's probably the best heritage days that we ever had. It was where I had a lot of positive comments about the, the carnival for one and just mm -hmm. the event in itself. So, you, know, you guys did a good job. Thank you. I've seen several of the police interacting with us, but the kids too, that was really great. Jill, thank you for your hard work. Thank you. And, and uh, not just uh, our own observations, but many families came up during the event and just uh, expressed um, just just absolute love for the carnival and even a request that they come back. That in yeah. this group, they came back. Again, so yeah, thank you. we're trying. So, um, <laughs> the next speaker is Randy, sir. In the floor. Uh, may I approach? Yes, sir. Okay. Randy Perry is my name, Diamond Tap. That's my game. Had it for uh, 13 years. I know about everybody here. Uh, I've been in this town for forever. Uh, probably the worst environment that I've been going through is probably the last couple of years for tavern business. Uh, My, I had a disparity between 2013 and 2014, about $53,000. Uh, the mayor and city manager, they're aware of that. I had a meeting with them one at a time. Uh, at the time, they asked me, what could they do to help? Uh, tonight, they're showing. Put out more liquor licenses. How much worse can it get? I don't know. Depends on how many more liquor licenses we hand out. Uh, we're all dressed.
drinking out of the same pool. The liquor licenses that are out there now. <coughs> All you're going to do is dilute the pool. Okay? Save money. Okay? There's, if we want to do something for the community, that's bringing jobs into the community. Give me more adults. Right now, we're just sharing what we got, and it's diluting what we got, and everybody's feeling the pinch. I used to pay $1,200 a month in sales tax. Now I'm paying $700. Now go figure. Where's it getting made up at? If you put in more machines, or are you going to get more players? No. You're going to get the same players. It's going to be spread out. Your projected income off the machines is probably 36000 this year. Ain't bad. Is it going to go to forty? I doubt. It's probably going to stay at thirty-six, regardless of how many machines you put in. Okay? Uh, my sales tax, I'd love to be paying $1,200 a year. I could use a little help, not uh, not negative things, to keep business here in town. And especially the businesses we already got. It would be nice to get cooperation. That's all I ask for, consideration. I've been in business 13 years. That place has been there since 1947. It was uh, business before then. It's generated a lot of revenue over those years. Uh, I, ho I hope it stays here. So that's all I get to say. Thank you. Randy, I do have a question for district clarification because it was asked, I mean, during the uh, discussion of uh, amending the liquor license at a Class H, if that would affect you. Uh, you said during the discussion that it would not affect you, but then in um, your uh, public comments, you kind of alluded that it would affect you. Do what? Um, I never did say that it wouldn't affect me. Okay. No. Any Anytime there's a liquor license created, it's going to affect the people that are already in business. Agreed. Agreed. Well, no, I've had, I mean, I had a discussion with Councilman earlier th earlier today about um, the uh, the other request that was, sure. was out there. And, and I will tell you, I'll say this publicly. I have a real issue about another liquor license going out there because I realize that you, you only have a limited number of drinkers. So um, I, I'm going to tell you that we, we do support you in your business, and I do want to see you pay more state or sales tax. And, and I hope you're extremely successful. Uh, my decision today, though, um, I at least with the, um, the license age, uh, I don't see this direct competition. That was the reason for my vote there. Uh, if I felt that it was a direct competition to you, in that essence, I don't, you know. I don't that, have a problem with the one that was just created here. Very good. I just wanted to make but sure because... Here's, you know, the, if, if she comes back a year from now and says, okay, I'd like to have on-premises, this isn't working out. It'd be better to have it on-premises. Now she's already got one, okay? And now all she needs is an amended uh, license. Well, it's pretty easy to do once you already got one, okay? Okay. With there being no further public comments, entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Call it. Jenkins? Yes. Horn? Yes. Horn? Yes. McKinley? Yes. Ms. Yes. 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 Yes